This is another one of John's designs. This was the first effort of the Blacksburg Group, and John Titus was the designer of this computer, to design a training computer that uh, brought all the interface signals out for tying the computer to various instruments. And it had a, we, we were all thinking of mini computers at the time, so it was designed a little bit around the mini computer concept of the switch register and lights and so forth. We were still thinking mini computers in those days. Uh, this computer, called the uh, M Mark 80, uh, was a very effective computer based on the 8080 microprocessor. And there was a book written by uh, primarily uh, Peter Roney with some contributions by Titus, and I was uh, associated with the group at the time, a whole book with experiments called the uh, Bug Book 3. This is probably the first book that was not just uh, data sheets from a uh, microprocessor manufacturer like Intel that actually told you how to use a microprocessor chip or a microcomputer. This computer was a little bit expensive because it had separate cards in it. Uh, there were a number of them sold, but John went on to design a more effective computer called the uh, MMD-1, which we looked at the uh, one of them, and we'll look at a prototype here too. So this was uh, one of the Blacksburg Group first uh, computers. Here's the Mark 80. This is one of the first micro training microcomputers that John Titus designed in the Blacksburg group. Uh, we were thinking many computers at the time. This is based on the 8080 microprocessor, so it was designed with switches and lights, just like a regular mini computer. Turned out that wasn't really the way to go for microcomputers. It had multiple cards, was a bit expensive, and it brought out all the signals so you could interface to the computer to other devices. And uh, we sold a number of these through e &L Instruments. And there was a book written <clears throat> primarily by uh, Peter Roney. And uh, John Titus contributed some to it. I was a consultant on this as well. It's called the Bug Book 3. It's a series of experiments with this computer. And the Bug Book 3 is probably the first uh, academic educational book besides data sheets from companies like Intel. So it was a complete book on how to use the processor, how to use the computer. It was a pretty popular book and led to many other books in our Blacksburg Continuing Education series. Okay. Well, of course, we're very pleased and proud to have as our museum collection four original Apple I computers. We don't keep them here in the museum. We keep them in the bank vault uh, downtown at the bank. But I brought them out today for the photo shoot and um, people always ask, uh, how did you acquire four Apple I computers? Well, the story's a bit long, but the short of the story is I didn't do it yesterday. I've been collecting computers for 40 years. I advertised for many years, probably 25 years, uh, that I wanted uh, pre-1980 computers. And these Apple Ones, I was offered about 10 Apple Ones over that period. And these four I bought in the early 90s, over 20 years ago. And at that time, Apple I computers were selling between ten dollars and $30,000. They were kind of expensive even then, of course, much more now. Like I said, I was offered about ten. I was able to buy about four of them. And I'll describe them briefly for you. They're all in very nice condition. Uh, this one here I bought from John Birch, who had, it, had bought it with a case. And we're going to show you the case in a minute. It's a very pristine computer with no modifications, beautiful Apple I. And uh, we bought that from John, John Birch. Uh, it was a very easy sale. He called me up one day and he said, David, he said, I've got this Apple I. He said, everybody wants me to give it to them. But he said, I can't give it away. I said, well, no, they're worth a lot of money. And we agreed on a price and we bought it. It's a beautiful specimen, has a case with it. This Apple I is just an Apple I board. You notice that there's no chips in it. Uh, very fascinating story here. I bought this computer from Adam Skulski. Now, Adam was a friend of Steve Wozniak, a bit younger than Steve, and they worked together uh, for a number of projects. And one of their projects was the first West Coast computer conference, microcomputer conference in 1976. Uh, they did some interesting things there, including a, a spoof. But anyway, uh, Adam Skulski worked with Wozniak, 
and Wozniak gave him this board without any chips. So it's, it's a beautiful Apple I without any chips. And uh, Skulski's still living. He's the only one living of the people I bought these computers from that I can find. I know that John Birch has gone the origin of the other two. I can't seem to contact him. But Adam's still living. I bought this from him in 1994, and it was delivered in 95. And people have asked him, uh, well, why did you sell it? He said, well, we needed the money at the time to start a business. Of course, nobody could see into the future what they would be worth. And this isn't worth as much as one with chips in it by any means. But it's a beautiful specimen. We call this a Skulski's computer. Um, I had a call from a fellow, uh, Dustin, and he said, I've got two Apple Ones. And I thought it was probably a spoof call. This was around 1995 as well. He said, right, I don't want to sell them right now. But he said, at some point I do. Would you be interested? I said, well, I'd certainly like to talk to you. So I kind of buzzed it off as being a, just a crank call. He called me up about a year later and he said, well, David, he said, uh, I've got two kids in college. I need some money. He said, uh, I've got the two computers. I said, great. I said, how much you want for them? He gave me a figure and I said, well, I can't do quite that much. I can't pay for all your kids going to school. But uh, <laughs> we did agree on a price and I got both computers and they're very nice. Um, so we call these the Dustin computers. By the way, all of our computers are on the Apple registry, uh, Mike Willigal's Apple registry. And um, they're all pretty much original. And I say pretty much, we did substitute a couple of parts on one. Very nice computer. This one has a little bit of mod on it, or addition, no modification, but a beautiful specimen. And uh, this one here is also one of the ones I bought from Dustin. And when Haggy up in Leesburg, Virginia, has just restored this to working condition. Uh, it's a beautiful specimen. Again, it's all original without any particular, without any modifications. And uh, I just picked it back up from him last uh, Sunday. And it, it is an operating Apple One. I think they all operate. We just don't want to fire them up. You don't want to burn them up or anything. So we've had this one operating. Beautiful computer. So these two are from some I bought from Dustin in around 1995 or 96. Uh, some of the ones I were offered, I remember one uh, gentleman called me up and he said, well, if you buy me a new van, you can have my Apple One. And there were a few trades like that. I, did, I was not one that participated in that, and I didn't buy any from him. But I kept all that correspondence. I've got fascinating correspondence on uh, the origin of these computers and a lot of others. I've kept stacks of all my correspondence and notes and so forth. So this is my collection of Apple I computers. They're all original. They're all in the Willigal Apple registry. And they're beautiful specimens. And we want to show you the uh, case that goes with the Birch computer as well. So these are our Apple, four Apple Ones. I know of no one else in the world that has four. Uh, there may be. And I didn't go with that goal in mind, but I ended up here with four, and I'm certainly delighted to have four. And I couldn't do it today. You know, the price that they're getting for them is ranging between a few hundred thousand and nine hundred thousand, and certainly uh, out of my price range to be buying these things today. So we're delighted to have these as part of the Bugwick Historical Microcomputer Collection.